Yes, yes, people, what is happening? Welcome to Saeed TV. And you're probably thinking, what's going on? Well, we've got a special, special preview than no other. John Salako, former Crystal Palace player. John, it's, I just want to say thank you very much for coming on to the channel today. I appreciate it. Absolute pleasure, Saeed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But listen, it's the penultimate game of the season. John, can you believe it? It's already the last game of the season. How quick has it been for you? It's incredible. I mean, as a player, um, the seasons just fly by. You go into pre-season training before you know it. You're heading into Christmas. You come through that, get through that January period. And then it's, it, it, you know, you April, May, and, and you're heading into your summer holidays. Um, you know, 20 years as a player, it, every season just flew by. Um, but even now, outside of football, um, the season seemed to 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 go incredibly fast. I can't believe. I think this is the seventeenth year since um, I retired back in two thousand and five, mm. which is it's madness. Mm. Do you miss it? Do you miss it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do you know? Mm. I, I think the thing you miss most is obviously the match days. But you know, going in training with the lads, you know, you get up in the morning. It's just the best thing because you know you love it. You go to, with the lads. You're looking forward to training. Um, you know, obviously it, it's just brilliant. And then obviously you're preparing for games uh, and the games were, was, you know, the special thing that you missed mm. now. So I do, you know, do the hospitality at Palace. So I, you know, host a couple of lounges and some of the boxing. Um, and you talk about the games, you see the pitch, you know, the pitches are amazing. You see the lads warming up and um, you think, oh, do you know what? How I'd love to be out Yeah. There. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's you know, it's it's done. So you can't change. Mm. Uh, you've just got to be. Um, you know, I've really loved watching the way Patrick Vieira played. Um, the mm. way the lads have sort of taken on board everything that he's tried to bring. You know, the different philosophies and styles. Whether it's a back four, back five. You know, two in midfield, the three, uh, three up front. So, you know, even you know, playing with two up front at times in the four four two. So, you know, Patrick's been able to experiment and instill a discipline. And an organisation within the team that I think they've loved, they've embraced, um, and, and they're growing. Um, and I, I just think you know the the future is really bright. Um, mm. You know, it's a, it's a real shame. You know, threw away a two goal lead against Everton, and you know, yeah, it's going to be you know it's going to be. Um, I was going to say it's going to be a little bit contentious to see how it unfolds uh, with the situation with Patrick Vera after the game. So. Mm. You know, I've watched that. You know, obviously, look, Everton were absolutely delighted. You know, Goodison's been a fortress uh, for Everton, and, and the main reason why they, they're going to stay up um, is their home form. I think they've won nine games at home uh, yeah. out of the 10 or 11. I think they've won two away and nine at home, which is quite incredible. So that is incredible form. And, and the Everton fans are so passionate. And, you know, how are you going to stop them running on the pitch? The only thing was that, you know, someone confronted Patrick and he reacted. Um, so it's all <laughs> it, it's all not going to pan out very well, I don't think. It, it does look bad when you see the footage. You know, the fans are what they are. I think the oh. land pretty strikes Patrick in the face. You know, I think he's oh. totally jovial, but, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think in the heat of the moment, straight after a game, you know, Patrick wasn't best pleased and he didn't like that, didn't take it too well. And, and I, well, I just hope, you know, they look at it and say, right, do you know what? Let's just let it go and let's move on. Absolutely. I think that's the hot topic now with fans coming on the pitch. I think someone in your face got the camera in your face. You don't know what the fans are going to do nowadays, what they're carrying. So I think it is a kind of an interesting topic, you know. Do you think that Premier League might, you know, do how like European do, you know, European games in, where they have the net in and not let fans in? But then again, this is part of the game where fans come in, emotion of it. How do you, where do you stand on that? Like fans coming in and celebrate on the pitch. Listen, I mean, I've been involved in some great games. Villa Park, 1990, would beat Liverpool 4-3 in that FA Cup. You know, you know, I've played in other semi-finals as well and other big games. And and that game at the end of the season, when you stay up, is the biggest game. And to stay in the Premier League for for Everton, and you know, it, it, it's difficult. You know, for me, I want to see the fans showing that emotion. You look at Fulham when they got promoted; the fans were on the pitch. Um, uh, you know, as for Bournemouth and, and, you know, there's that raw emotion um, and it's a passionate, emotional game. And I don't want to see that taken away. And, you know, I mean, the only thing I would say, obviously, you know, I think Billy Sharp got headbutted a few years ago yeah. um, and that was a nasty incident and the guy was jailed. 
And certainly I think, you know, with video technology now, I think the one thing you know as a fan, if you go onto the pitch and you do something stupid, um, well, was it in Aston Villa? Was it was it a, a lad jumped up and punched Jack Grealish a little while ago? Yeah, a couple of years ago. Then he got the winner. But yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah. It's he true. got told as well. But it's just simple as that. Look, if you go onto the pitch and you strike a player, then you're getting jail time. Right? You're going to absolutely. Let him so as a fan, I don't care whether you drinking drugs. You know, that, that's the only problem with society now. We saw it in the Euros. You know, these lads. It's not just drink now. You know, they're taking substances mm. that, that, and they they do things that they wouldn't normally do and that's the only scary thing is like now the, the game has changed there is a different element to to fans now with you know with obviously the, the drug side I think they're a little bit more brazen I think they're a little bit more aggressive um and it's a shame but I, 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 I I really don't so mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure they yeah. the other night um against Rangers, you know, it's that contrast, isn't it? You lose, you, you know, you're devastated. But for Everton to stay in the Premier League is huge for Everton. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. The thought of yeah. on with that squad is, is mm. really, you know, it is really quite unfathomable. But, you know, fair play to Frank Lampard. You know, congratulations to them. Let's look on the positive side. Look, I hope they look at that. It was a stupid little incident. Let's move on. Yep. Emotions mm. were high. Uh, emotions were raw. And uh, mm. let, let's move on. Um, Absolutely, you know, no. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen in Paris. I'm going to the, the Champions League final, um, Liverpool, Real Madrid. So, you know, I certainly won't be running on the pitch. But <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, exactly. Yeah. Will, you know, whoever wins, those fans will be on the pitch. Trust me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I just want to go back to uh, Vieira. There was, you know, I wouldn't say there was kind of strong doubts about Vieira, whether he could manage the role. Um, he did he did, he did, did some stuff at Nice. Um but coming to Crystal Palace, there was this doubt that, you know, you could take over and take it to the next level. I always think with Crystal Palace, what's the next level for Palace? They've hovered around mid-table. Can they get into that top eight, you know, top ten and move a little bit up? What was what was your feeling when when, when Vieira came into the role? What, was there a hype? Yeah, do you know, uh, when we were looking at um, who was going to come in as Crystal Palace manager, um, you know, and, and I've spoken to lots of Palace fans and Vieira was never in the conversation. Never once was Vieira mentioned as a possible candidate, as someone that anyone would have wanted. Um, you know, we saw what he did in New York, saw what he did at Lille. And I thought very much he was he was a manager that was growing into himself and, and learning the game. Um, but, you know, Frank Lampard was an early runner. And then you think, well, actually, Frank Lampard was, was in the offering. Then in the conversation, why isn't Patrick Vieira? So, um, I, you know, we were looking at, you know, Sean Dyche. I personally thought Eddie Howe. Um, and then Nuno Spirito Santo. Um, I thought he was nailed on. I think it was after, close. Yeah, yeah it was close. After it looked like he wasn't he wasn't going to go to Spurs. I thought we we had secured him, which I thought fantastic. You know, I think with his experience, I think with his knowledge in the transfer market, you know, the youngsters he's he's and what he's done at Wolves, I thought was an exceptional job. Um, and I thought what a steal, what a coup to get Nuno because I thought. You know, he's you know, I, I definitely thought he was ready for a big job and I thought he was he was um badly treated and, and had a bad hand dealt to him at Spurs, especially with the situation with Kane, uh with with, with the back room and the board and everything that happened there was was quite poisonous. So it was an impossible job for him. So I thought Nuno was coming and then look, you know, Patrick arrived and you thought, okay, let's back him. Um, and he's been incredible. Just the stature. I mean, he's one of my favourite all-time players. I'm a, I'm a bit of a gooner. So, you know, for me, Thierry Henry, Dennis Burkamp, and Patrick Vieira are, you know, right up there. Up there yeah. Um, yeah. Funny enough, I, after the game, I, 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 um, the other day, um, at Celeste, uh, after the game, I bumped into uh, Dennis Burkamp and I was like a kid in a sweet shop. I was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, God, he is like... Um, what a player. Um, what so, a player, yeah, Henry, yeah. really Burkamp and Vieira were right up there um, as the greatest players ever played in the Premier League and, and, and to play in the world. So, you know, for Patrick to come, you know, that stature and you're looking at if you're, yeah, if, if you're, you know, Wilfred Zahar, Conor Gallagher, you know, Eze, you know, Tyreek Mitchell, you know, to work with someone like Patrick Vieira day in, day out is, is, it's just got to be, you know, a dream come true. Um, and he's quiet and he's, 
you know, he's delivered. And, and his man management has been fantastic. And I, you know, he's demanded of the players um, consistency, a level of performance, learning, growing, a level of intelligence, the way they play in a shape, in a system. Um, and it's so much about off the ball in the Premier League because you, you can't switch yeah. up. You've got to drop into a system. So it's all right for the lads, you know, going forward. More importantly, for a team like Palace, and you mentioned about finishing up higher in the league. Well, when you look at the quality of players at other teams, you know, the money they can spend, um, you know, for Palace to be finishing around that halfway um, is is phenomenal. It's phenomenal, it's phenomenal yeah. Um, you know, I think for Palace not to be involved in, in you know, it's almost like the perfect season because, yeah, you know, no drama. No you know, drama, yeah. You know, we went through a little spell where we drew against Burnley, we drew against Norwich, where Wilfred missed a penalty, and that could have just cemented it a lot earlier. You know, there's been draws at home, a game against Burnley at home, you know, Newcastle, Wolves, um, Brighton. There's been some draws at home that, um, you know, those wins at home would have taken us a lot. I think we've drawn eight or nine games at home, which, mm. you know, we'll take. But, you know, two or three of those into a win takes you into 50, 54 points, which takes you into, you know, Europe, Europa. Uh, Close to us. Yes. <laughs> Close to us. <laughs> um, but yeah. if you look at it in reality, um, finishing sort of 12th FA Cup yeah. semi-final at Wembley. Wow. You know, shame. You know, Chelsea were fantastic. I mean, Chelsea, Liverpool. They lost. turned the gear. Yeah, yes. they turned the gear. Or Man City, you're like, you know. You I take, know. Take Chelsea, wouldn't you? But exactly. Chelsea was good on the day. But the fans got a day out at Wembley. So, absolutely. It's almost like I. it could not really have gone any better as an opening season, Patrick. But as we all know, the, the Premier League's unforgiving. So now he's got to go um, get, obviously, the, the Man United game. But he'll already be, have been thinking about, you know, can he keep Conor Gallagher? Who does he want to add? Who's he going to bring in? You know, is he going to let a few go? There's pro probably, I would say, maybe three or four out the door. Three or four in for me. Um, I think we need ace up front. Yeah. Mateta um, in the second half of the season or last last third of the season. I think it's been fantastic. He's really been excellent. AU, um, I think, has, has been fantastic when he's been asked to play out on the right or the left. Um, or down the middle, he's been fantastic. He's contributed goals, you know. But the bottom line is, you know, our front players just don't score enough goals. So, you know, we rely on Connor. Obviously, Wilfred's top scorer. Uh, he's had his best season ever. I think he's got fourteen uh, this season, all all told. I think he's got yeah. ten in the in the league or eleven. But he's been taking penalties. He's taken responsibility, uh, even when he missed at Norwich. He's bounced back. So he's shown real character. Real strength. So if Connor, I think Connor's got eight, Wilford's got say eleven. So, you know, that's a big chunk of our goals. Whereas I think your Matetas and, and your Edwards like sixes, five and sixes. And they use probably, you know, three or four. So as strikers, if we had, you know, a couple of strikers that were getting your 14, 15 goals, mm. and the other one getting 10, 11. Yeah. I think that changes the landscape. And then you turn those draws into wins. So that's very much something that Patrick will be looking at. But the back four. Um, solid a right back. I mean, Joel Ward's been phenomenal again. Nathaniel Klein's come in and done a fantastic, but Gay and Anderson had been, been fantastic, and obviously Tyreek Mitchell at left back. So, mm. obviously, you know, Gay and, and Tyreek getting the England call ups phenomenal, well deserved. Um, and, and Gay, at, I think he's only 22 or 23, it's just phenomenal. Um, yeah, you know, such maturity. Um, and again, Tyreek, I think he's just got to add a little bit more confidence and belief going forward, a little bit more quality because defensively he is, he is amazing. And, um, mm. you know, without a doubt, um, you know, there will be vultures uh, circling. Um, so mm. hopefully, you know, we can hang on. Tyreek, for me, needs to have at least one, if not two more season at, at Palace, but he's destined, I think, for the very, very to top. top. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so as as is gay, you know, Guita has been amazing in goal, but Butland's, you know, really grown in stature and confidence. Now he's, you know, getting more game time. And midfield, I think we probably need someone in centre mid, um, you know, Milo, Milivojevic and uh, MacArthur. Probably just getting a little bit, you know, to that to that side of, you know, leggy. Uh, maybe yeah. the strengthening in there. Um, so, but all good, you know, obviously Will Hughes and Kiate, I, you know, a, a top top player so you know there's a nucleus there of a side 
you know, that uh, Patrick can build on. And he's, we've got some wonderful mm -hmm. youngsters coming through. I mean, you've got a world-class academy now. Um, oh, brilliant. New I mean, facilities as well in, in, yeah, in yeah, Crystal I mean, Palace. It's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, mm. God, I would have loved to have had facilities like that when I was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but sometimes, you know, um, say so we, we didn't have very much when I came through with, with, with the likes of Gareth Southgate. Um, but it toughened us up. It may, it, you know, you've, you've got to have that determination. You've got to have that drive. You've got to have that belief and, and that you've got to have that ruggedness and, and that toughness of, of character um to make it in the game and you know a lot of kids now they come into the academy and get the track suit and they're you know i've made it no you haven't the, that's where the hard work starts and you have that belief and that work ethic and that desire and that drive to keep bouncing on and you know only one percent are going to come through and play at the top level and uh, i keep remembering that and for a lot of kids and i keep telling that parents they need plan b they need plan c you know because you know football might only be a part-time job you know the, to, to, yeah. to play football for a living as a professional is a dream come true that only happens to uh a, a very small um amount of people so mm. you know they've got to be realistic you've got to dare to dream but you know keep your feet on the ground keep your feet on the ground yeah just speak so speaking on one player in particular i know you know south uh, crystal palace fans have loved him Connor gallagher how how hard is it going to be to keep it? Obviously, Chelsea won him back. You know, there's obviously a new era yeah. now with a new owner. You know, Colin Gallagher's been amazing for Crystal Palace, but how hard is it to kind of keep him there, do you reckon? Yeah. Uh, do you know what? I, I think it. if I, I... I really don't know where Thomas Tuchel sits, to be honest. You know, I watched that Chelsea side and and um, I thought, think, where is he going to fit in? Um, they've got Mason Mount that plays in that hole um, and, and, and Mason's phenomenal. So... You know, the only thing in the back of my mind that I think Connor will sit down with Tuchel this summer and the conversation will really be about the World Cup at the end of the year. Um, and he will say, listen, I mean, to go to the World Cup, you need to be playing. Um, and he he will say to Tuchel, look, if I don't want to come back to Chelsea and be a squad player. I don't want to come and sit, you know, in a big pond um, and be watching the games and, and miss out on the World Cup. Um, you know, is it possible I can stay at Palace, play, yeah. go to the World Cup, and then maybe, and it may be an idea where Tuchel thinks, right, actually, look, he's he's doing really well. He's maybe not quite ready to come back to Palace yet. I'm sorry, to Chelsea. Um, let him go to the World Cup, and then, you know, in January, uh, they make a decision then. Mm. So that That is the only thing. Otherwise, Tuchel can be ruthless and say, no, get your ass back here. You muck in in pre-season and fight for your shirt. And if you deserve it, you'll get a shirt. If not, you know, you'll be on the bench. And, you know, if, if it, it, it may be that it gets to the end of pre-season and the start of the season, um, if Connor's not in the team, he may well knock on his door and say, can I go uh, back to Palace and play? Mm. Yeah, so he has pre-season. Game time, yeah. Yeah, so those those are the two options. Or he, or he just goes back to Chelsea and, and uh, you know, he goes on, on his merry way because he's been sensational. Simply sensational. There'll be a lot of clubs that want um, Connor um, and, you know, he, he, he has been phenomenal. He's been head and shoulders for me, the best player this season, his, his energy, his intelligence, his, his work rate. Um, it's his, crazy how much running it does, isn't it? Yeah, he covers a lot of ground. I, I haven't seen the stats, but he's got to be, he's got to be up there 15, 16 Ks a game at times, you know, against the big teams as well, you know. And it's been a shame, really. Uh, I think we lost 1-0 at home to Chelsea in a narrow defeat. And then we drew 0-0 against Man City. And, you know, in, in the big games, on the big stage, he has mm. just been sensational. Even playing for England, making his full debut. Um, yeah. Wembley, he was, he just isn't, uh, did, you know, he, he just thrives. He just, you know, he, he just almost sort of grows. And, and the bigger the stage, you know. Mm. That's Absolutely. The Sign of a great player when you when you're on that big stage and you just you come alive and, and you're not intimidated. Um, you're just going out there and and that's how he plays with that effervescent and that that character and that drive and you know everything for me starts with hard work and work rate and so that where, whichever wherever you play but obviously especially in midfield you need that drive that energy um, and then everything comes off of that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we have got a game on Sunday. Uh, my team, Man United, not had a great season. It's a season to forget, really, if I'm being honest with you. Um, what have you made about Man United? And 
at the season we've had, you know, we had Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, uh, we got sacked in October, Ralph Ragnar has come in, um, hasn't worked out for him as well. We've not made top four, it looks like Europa League, but could be Conference League if West Ham win and we lose. Um, what have you made of my, my United this season? I, do you know what? I think it's just been, it's been embarrassing. Um, I think they just lurched from one disaster to another. It's just, and at times it, it's it's just, um, I, I don't know, it's just been hard to watch. Um, mm. You know, obviously I think under Solskjaer, I really like him as a lad, but I just, I, I thought he's an interim manager um, and it, it, it just wasn't working and they, they tried to make it work for so long and for, for arguably the biggest club in the world. I just think it's been the mismanagement at boardroom level has just been nothing short of criminal. Um, I just think, you know, it doesn't really seem that the, the Glazers are that interested, um, they're that bothered. And 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 um, it, it's just been total mismanagement at the top level. And and it's been it's been hard to watch. I mean, Man United have been the bane of my career. Um, beat us in the cup final in 90 in a replay, semi-finals in 94. Um, you know, they've stopped me winning. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. I've got no, uh, I've got no love. Uh, you know, I, I, I respect and love Man United as a big club, and you know, I loved what Fergie did, greatest manager, and and the, and the amount of trophies they won was just simply incredible. But you know, to see it lurch from Van Gaal to Mourinho to you know Moyes, obviously taking over an impossible job for him, and then obviously you know Solskjaer coming in, and then this Ragnick situation has just been, you know, the players have just down tools. I mean, Pogba's absolutely. Good to go. No, I, I don't know what's happened to Marcus, you know, the incredible job and the work he's done, you know, with feeding the kids and, you know, he absolutely deserves all the accolades and, and the MBEs. And, but he's got to get his, his boots on and, and play, play for Man United. He's a footballer, um, you know. So some of the lads have, have, have just really not stepped up and, and been embarrassing. Um, and for Man United, not good enough. Quality's not been there and they, they haven't really, you know, pulled their weight and and shown that they want to put that great shirt on and play in front of those great fans. Um, and now Ten Hag's got to come in, I think, incredible manager, great signing. They've made that decision now. They've got to give him money and back him. Mm. Uh, he's got a lot of work to do. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of work. He's got a nucleus of a side. But, you know, again, for me, Ten Hag has just got to rebuild. Uh, he's got, a pull, I think, five or six, maybe seven out the door. And then you talk mm. about five or six in. Um, and then hope, you know, really try and get in that top four, which is not going to be easy. Um, no. so the Arsenal will be stronger. Uh, Leicester will, will be coming. Wolves, you know, when you look at West Ham, I mean, but that top three of Liverpool, Man City and Chelsea, um, yeah. strong, but they should be in there. Man United has got to be up there playing Champions League football. It's incredible. Um, as you say, you, you, you know, Europa football is, is the minimum. Um, for a club like Man United, but you know, obviously, like it goes, football goes like that. You have those spells. Um, you know, Barcelona probably been the doldrums for a few years now. Um, but um, you know, Ten Hag is a top top manager. That guy will not take any messing around. He will demand, and you know, tactically, uh, mm. technically, and you know, sort of desire and work rate. He will demand that. Um, mm -hmm. And I, 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 I think he he will be very successful. And it's very exciting to have Klopp, to have Guardiola, to have Ten Hag. Big managers, yeah. They're too cool. You know, they're top top managers, and and we just you know we we need the best players um, playing. You know, Lewandowski could end up here. Um, you know, we we want the top players playing here because it's the best league in the world. Um, it's so exciting, and we're so proud to have you know the Premier League here. Um, we want the best players. Ronaldo hopefully will stay. I think he's been exceptional. He's just Superman. He's Superman. Mm, he is, yeah. 36 years old. What he's done, the way he plays, his energy, you know, his work rate, uh, his quality. And, uh, you know, the boy's still got it. Can play for another couple of years, can't he? So he just looks after mm. himself. The ultimate professional. So, um, you know, yeah. I mean, it's been a disastrous season, really, as far as United are concerned. Uh, not been Absolutely. good. Absolutely. The players have got to take a good look at themselves. And, uh but yeah, Ragnick goes upstairs. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a weird one. It's a weird one. You know, I listen to the guy talk. He sounds like a headmaster or a school teacher. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't sound like you know. Yeah, it doesn't sound like um, you know top manager. Um, and and mm -hmm. and hopefully, well, that will change with Ten Hag coming in. So you know, he mm -hmm. goes upstairs. He can do that. But how he can do part time job? I think there was a, a situation of him taking over a, a national Austria. 
Austria. Wow. Well, okay. yeah. See, I'm like, what, what, what the hell? How is yeah, talking, yeah. How is Ragnik talking about managing Austria? Mm. I mean, that is one of the biggest jobs in the world is to be mm. the director of football for Manchester United. Mm. You think the club have not wanted to give them that role from the off? Have they always had a clear distance, say, you know what, you've got an advisory role and we'll just keep you there. Yeah, I mean, fine. I mean, if 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 that's what he is, but you know, they've got to sort out their the mess upstairs, you know, in that boardroom mm. and upstairs and behind the scenes, it, it, it's a mess. And you need stability and you need strong leaders, um, like Woodward and and you know, I mean, obviously Fergie ruled it with a with a rod of iron. Um, but you know, Ten Hag's got to come in and dominate, and it's got to be all about him. I mean, it's just been too much off the field talk, obviously, with with Pogba and his agent, and you know, with you know whoever it is, you know, sort of Rashford or you know, obviously Mason Greenwood. It's just been it's just mm. been so many off the field situations. You think, wow, what is going on at Man United? But look, let's draw a line. <laughs> Get this season, Palace. Like the last time. Palace beat Man United was in '91, and we beat them three-one in the last game of the season. Don't worry, to... we've we've broken our records this season, so don't worry. So, so um, I suppose it's a bit of a harsh one, really. I, I I'm sort of hoping that um, Palace don't win because they dig that up every year. The last time we won, uh, just yeah. Scott just scored two goals. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if they go and win and Conor Gallagher scores two goals, they won't talk about me anymore. They'll just forget me, Avi. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Just a quick question before I get your prediction and we kind of wrap it up. Um, Arwan Bissako, um, you know, it's not first season came in, I thought rightly so, you got his plaudits. Um, but then it's kind of fizzled out the team now. Uh, maybe it doesn't suit the style of Man United. There is some, you know, reports coming out that you know that Crystal Palace do want him back. Um, and Man United are now looking to let him go. Um, do you think Crystal Palace? Would, would want him back? Is that his home? You know, was it always meant to be that he stayed there? And you know, or, yeah, or do you do? Yeah, he's a he's a local lad, um, and of course, yeah, we we would love to take him back. But um, you know, I worked with Aaron uh, when he was seventeen, just coming up for eighteen, and he was playing in the under twenty threes. Um, you know, we talked about letting him go. You know, the attitude wasn't great. He wasn't going to college. He was very sulky, very quiet. Um, and there's a winger, as a right winger, he was failing. Um, and we were, th we were talking about letting him go. And, um, you know, pre-season he came back and he sort of played in a wing-back role and he played up against Wilfred a couple of times in training. And it was like, okay, okay. The boy, you know, right back. And then, of course, he got his chance. I think Joel got injured and his first, I think his first four games were like Man United, Tottenham, Chelsea and... Um, Leicester, wasn't it? And, and a couple of those were live on television and great results. Yeah. And he was phenomenal. And you, you thought, wow. And all of a sudden, the world was like, who is this lad? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a very meteoric rise. Um, and defensively, he was incredible. Uh, going forward, we really didn't know. I mean, but I knew that he lacked probably the real quality and the, the, the real intelligence. Um, and I was very surprised. 42 games signed for Man United for 50 grand. I mean, fair play. Good luck to you. Um, and he went in there and he did really well, um, again, defensively, an absolute rock. You know, those long legs, the speed and, you know, he 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 went and did. But, you know, United need more than that. You know, when you look mm. at Trent, when you look at Rhys James, when you look at Trippier, yeah. when you look at Carl Walker, when you look at Cancelo, you know, when you look at, you know, even uh, Liveramento at um at Southampton, Southampton. you know, yeah. I, look at, I look at, you know, you look at top right backs and, you know, you've got to defend. But you've got to go forward. Fullbacks are so important. And you've got to be able to pick a pass. You've got to be able to pick a cross. You know, you've got to know when to make those runs to tuck in and, and join in and supplement the attack. Um, and and obviously, you know, he's he, he you know, for me, you know, I, I never really uh, thought, you know, he was top, top level, uh, good enough for Man United, but he certainly is good enough for Palace. That's that's for sure. Um, and you know, his, his confidence being knocked. And if that has got to be the situation, um, Ten Hag will come in. He'll decide, you know, whether he's part of his plans. And if he comes back to Palace, then, yeah, we would love to have him. And he would do really well uh, for us because the way we play is very much, you know, we want our fullbacks to sit in. We don't expect him to go forward too much, yeah. but to, to, to get forward, you know, at times. 
mm. and, and and do a little bit. But you know, it's kind of like we, you know, Palace are more, you know, defensively sound first. Yeah, you know, very well yeah. play from the back, and and certainly, you know, um, one uh, he can do that. Um, Aaron, uh, he certainly can uh, can can do that, and he needs to grow. And this is character time. This is character time where he's got to bounce on. So if I if I was Aaron, you know, be thinking, right, I need to have a really good preseason. I need to work um, on my ball control and going forward and my passing. Um, and I need to, to to go and think about the game and, and really come back preseason and work with Ten Hag because he's technically and tactically, you know, he will improve all those players in that squad. And if you want to work with someone, then say, right, OK, show me what you want from me and, and go and deliver us because... You know, he's playing for one of the biggest clubs in the world. You know, the only way is down from there, you know. Mm. And there's always a saying, you, you you can always go down, but you can't go up. You can't always go yeah, up. Yeah, true, so true. You stay, you hang on as tight as you can at, at, at the top level because mm. you start slipping down. Uh, it's a slippery slope. Um, mm. So, you know, fight for your life. Show us what you're about. You know, show mm. character. I mean, I don't, you know, don't particularly know, know him too well, but having worked with him, you know, he's a nice lad. Uh, he needs to come out of his shell a little bit. You know, he's oh. very, very quiet. Um, he just needs to show that character now um, and show show the world. And that's what it's about, you know, and every player mm. goes through that. And the top players come through these these challenges. Mm. So, you know. Absolutely, no, 100%. And then all of a sudden, he becomes the world's trickiest defender again when you try to play against Juan Bissaka. So, again, oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's a funny I old mean, world, isn't it? Yeah, defensively, you know, he even lost, you can see he lost that confidence. Defensively, yeah. where he was just phenomenal, got up against Sterling, up against you know Wilf, up against anyone. He was just like Mbappe, yeah, yeah, not, true, yeah. yeah. Here you go, in, you're not beating me. But then he started switching off a little bit. So he's just got to go back to the basics and um, back to the know, basics, yeah. Uh, have a good preseason, but you know, I mean, it's all good, really. Um, you know, for him, you know, he he's played in the in the Premier League. He's he's got a Man United shirt at the moment on his back. So there you go. Wow, absolutely. Yeah. With Ronaldo. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Stuff of dreams. Um, yeah. I think we're going to lose this game. I'll be honest with you, John. I'm not going to give you any any more than that. I think we've had a really, really bad season. I think away from home as well, we've not been great. Um, mm. I think Crystal Palace, last game of the season, crowd rocking, Sellers Park's always a difficult place anyway. I think we're going to lose this one. And I think Vieira, I think, is going to go out with a win. What, what are you thinking, your predictions? Well, I think we win. I think we finish... Um, right up there, possibly in the top half, um, with with the most points I think Palace have ever got in the top flight. Um, I think on, on the forty six, yeah, it'd be forty nine. That'd be that'd be um, either equals or better's um, the club record. So yeah, he's just saying that the stadium be rocking. I, uh, you know, I'd love, yeah, I'd love us to win. The only reservation I've got is obviously breaking that duck of the last time we won. So yeah, I, I can't see beyond. I, I think my head saying. Um, maybe 2-2 two, two. but Hart you know I definitely you know I think Palace it's a game Palace should win but if United bring their quality look they're a great side you know mm. Fernandez you know you, you got Ronaldo and you, you look throughout the side there's quality there uh Ilang, mm. Ilang has been fantastic I think um yeah I, I'm gonna go for 2-2 two, two, um but hopefully okay. we'll sneak the win and uh, finish yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. John, it's been a pleasure and uh, thanks for coming on. I appreciate your time and uh, I wish you all the best for next season as well and pre-season and whatever. But yeah, thanks for coming on, John. No worries, no worries. Have me on again. Good luck with the show. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Take care, guys. Subscribe Cheers. to the channel and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.